What's up everyone and welcome back to the Cobbs channel. For today's video we'll be discussing meshtastic routing and issues we've been running into and we'll also be going over various meshtastic deployment scenarios using this map here and what best settings are for each one. So join me as we look them over. Okay, I'll be back in a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. One issue with MeshTastic we've been running into here and with other meshes as well is nodes that aren't configured properly. The biggest configuration issue is probably nodes that are configured in a router or repeater role that shouldn't be and are causing routing issues. If I show the list in our area here in East Tennessee, we can see a large number of nodes either using router or router client. Now I've redacted their info because I'm not trying to call them out or blame them as I believe many of these are likely just set up this way due to a lack of awareness. And having a node on top of your house and looking at the available roles, some people may naturally select router or repeater for this node since that sounds like the best option, which is understandable. This is not the case, however, and router or repeater should really only be for nodes on top of mountains or large towers that have the ability to significantly contribute to the mesh. So even if you have access to maybe a water tower in town that could provide coverage throughout the entire town, if there's nodes in that area that are on top of mountains covering multiple towns, then it's best to just have those be the routers and the water tower node be set up as the client role. I think part of the issue as well is that many people don't realize that the client role is more than just a client and will actually also rebroadcast like routers and repeaters do. The biggest difference is routers and repeaters take priority and will rebroadcast before nodes using the client role so you won't waste top counts and be able to reach further. Now we've created this map to show some meshtastic node deployment scenarios and what meshtastic settings are best to use in each situation. Before we get into that though, let's use the map to demonstrate the issue where too many people are using the router role. So let's start off by showing an example of how things should work in a mesh that only has routers where necessary. So let's say this user in the southern portion of the mesh wants to communicate with this user in the northern portion. Let's say they're using a hop count of four. Now let's go through the hops in this setup here that only has routers where necessary. So we'll start off at four, then three, two, one, and finally their intended recipient receives the message. So that's how things should work with a properly laid out mesh. Now let's look at the same scenario with some unnecessary routers in the mix, which are these routers shown in red. Now this first unnecessary router is on top of a hill as we can see here on the map, and because of this, this user thinks that it's best that they set up their node as the router because they're at the highest point in their general area. Then we have a second unnecessary router, which is a node on the user's roof that they've set up so they're indoor nodes can reach the mesh and they're not aware that the client role rebroadcasts and could perform the same task without being detrimental to the mesh. So now let's go through the same scenario with the user in the southern part who wants to talk to the user in the northern part. This one receives a hop count of four and sends a hop count of three and then two and then one. And then this router receives a hop count of zero. And any time a node receives a hop count of zero, it will no longer rebroadcast, which means our intended recipient to the north never gets their message. These appropriately placed routers are able to reach each other without any help, so adding routers to the mix only causes problems, as you can see in the example. So it's important to select the appropriate role for your scenario to make sure we all work together and have a healthy mesh network. If you have a location that you think would be appropriate for a router or repeater role, be sure to work with the other mesh users in your area before setting yours up with one of these roles. Another issue I want to go over that I think isn't getting enough attention is when to use client or client mute. Client is a meshtastic client node that lets you communicate back and forth with others, but also rebroadcast and contributes to the mesh. Now client mute is a meshtastic client node that also lets you communicate back and forth with others, but this role does not rebroadcast. 
the default is client, but I think a good number of people should be using client mute instead. Let's go over some of the example scenarios on the map to explain. In this first scenario, let's say we're working with users in a neighborhood or general part of town. We have one user that lives on top of a hill. That would be a good location to cover the other users in the area. We would set up that user's node on a roof with a good antenna and use the client role. Then the other users in the area could just use an indoor node and reach the greater mesh from the node on the hill using the client role. Since their nodes are indoors, they would not be a benefit to the mesh, so client mute would be best. Then in this next scenario, we have a user that lives in town with a rooftop node. There's currently no other meshtastic users in this town, but since the user has a rooftop node and lives in town with many neighbors, there's potential for them to be a benefit to other users, so client role would be a good option here. Then we have another scenario with a user with a rooftop node, but this user lives in an area with very few neighbors and bad terrain, which would make it not a good location to benefit the mesh. So because of this, they're using the client mute role, even though that it's a rooftop node. Then for this next scenario, we have a user with a rooftop node set as client and multiple indoor nodes set up as client mute that use the rooftop node to reach the mesh. Now we have a vehicle scenario and this user has a single node that they keep in their vehicle to communicate while mobile, but since they're mobile it wouldn't benefit the mesh so they're using client mute. Now we have another vehicle scenario and this user has a node they keep in their vehicle to act as a relay for their on-person nodes which would allow the on-person node to reach the mesh while going into a store as shown in the example. So that covers the common client and client mute scenarios that I wanted to go over and the main reason we want to see more client mute is because having too many clients is creating more noise than necessary. If you look at the mesh from the perspective of these routers on tops of mountains, these nodes can receive signals from most of the nodes below and if they're all set as client nodes that rebroadcast everything, they're going to be bombarding the router nodes with signals unnecessarily. So having more client mute nodes and only using client where necessary will help alleviate this issue. When I log on to one of our mountaintop routers, it's consistently around 30% channel utilization and packets start being dropped at around 25%. Now I have one more scenario I want to cover in this video and that's attending a large event where there'll be hundreds of nodes in the area. For scenarios such as this, it's recommended to use one of the faster LoRa modem presets that can handle the increase in users, such as short fast. Another important setting is to make sure that MQTT is disabled. As long as these settings are in place, MeshTastic can handle a large number of users on the mesh. During the most recent DEF CON security conference, there were about 700 nodes on the same mesh and it continued working. Now there are some less common scenarios on the map here that I won't go over in this video, but I'll have a link to this map in the video description below that you can go to and reference for these scenarios and the best meshtastic settings for them. Big thank you to members of our Discord for some of these additional scenarios. And if there's a scenario that we missed, be sure to leave a comment in the video and I'll look into adding it to the map where it makes sense to help others looking to configure their meshtastic devices in the best way possible. That'll do it for this video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so you won't miss out on any future videos. Thank you all and have a good one.